If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. Yeah. All right. Good morning. Good morning. We'll uh, bring the uh, subcommittee to order and uh, start going. So this is cryptocurrency, whether the state should accept it, and how to do it. So... Anybody have any thoughts, comments, or anything they would like to add? I know that we have a tentative um, amendment that says uh, third. We're adding third-party processor, right? Correct. Every word says except cryptocurrency. Yeah. So they'll. So we're building in a third-party processor to all of it. Mm -hmm. Our state researcher uh, looked into this and found out that there was actually a, a, a commission established um, to look at cryptocurrency and whether the state should be involved in that. And uh, it did make some um, legislation out of this, um, but nothing detrimental, as you could see, right? Yeah, they're basically keeping an eye, you know, saying Monitor. that they're monitoring the cryptocurrency, you know. Right. So the, the commission is still the up. State. It was set up for five years. And right. It's going to. I think it's got three more. Two more years left. Twenty-one. 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 The uh, New Hampshire Banking Department was involved in it as well. Um, really didn't find anything bad about accepting uh, this currency. So, anybody in the audience have anything to add? Look at all the happy faces this morning. <laughs> Good. I said, so the um, HB 436, when the New Hampshire Banking, they said that there was not going to be licensed if they were dealing solely in cryptocurrency, but if they were dealing in money and cryptocurrency, then they would still have to be licensed. So in this case, they would, because they were going to be dealing with regular currency. So the third the party state. would. Right. But the person just dealing in that crypto that was sending it to the third right. party processor would, would not. Okay, but the third party processor would. So is that how you read, so I, that's what I was wondering as well. So <coughs> let's just take the example of BitPay, mm -hmm. who is the one that converts the Bitcoin. They would be responsible, they would be licensed. I right? believe because so. Because they deal with the Bitcoin well. and the money. Right. Yeah, they're very much licensed because they have access to a bank account and they're plugged into the ACH system and the uh -huh. bank wire system. And they can probably, I'm not sure about world coverage, but they can definitely deal yeah. with all the states. Yeah. And there are other companies like that. So, yeah. so this, and I was reading in, in, in Pam's report that a lot of them that were licensed initially just kept their license. Whether they're just dealing in the crypto, they just kept their license just mm -hmm. to make their life easier, I bet. So. I just want to come. So the, are you, is, you, is your concern about your concerns when we talked about this in, in committee meeting? I just was thinking that some sort of um, clause or something where you accept like, like if when you're actually clicking on that link something that just 
accepts any sort of responsibility if something, you know, I know it happens pretty quickly, but if something went dark in the 12 hours that it took to process, or if something... So if I think I read in, in your, is that they did put something that who's ever sending it for a payment, yep. they're still responsible. Right. Whether a, that cryptocurrency gets lost, stolen, vanishes into thin air, yes. they are still responsible for the payment. Right. I just wanted something that, because we were going to be selecting the actual processor, so if, you know, in the off chance that there was some sort of down the road, they were like, well, you didn't pick a good processor, so it's not my fault that they valued it differently. Um, so just something that says that before they send the payment, say, I accept this processor as the processor, and I assume any valuation from there. Have we had any, you know, I was wondering <coughs> if, um, we should just talk to the um, treasurer in New Hampshire to see what their thoughts are on this. The New Hampshire treasurer. Uh, we can. As long as and he got, gets his money, I don't know that he would, yeah. Yeah. So, so he gets the, the money. The other person I was going to reach out is to the uh, new chairman of that commission. Oh, yes. yes. Hunt. Representative oh, Hunt. Well, I, you know, a new chairman hasn't been named. Oh. No, but there's a woman who's, but, who was on, oh. Barbara Bickey. Yeah, she's moved out of state. Oh, she has? Yeah. So, you know, we're in that transition period between sessions, yeah. and I'm sure it's on the radar, but I, and maybe Representative Hunt will continue to be on, on the yeah. commission. I, I don't know that he'll be removed, but... Um, those are the names that are that appear on the web website yeah. currently, and they're the the past names. They may all be reappointed. But, mm -hmm. uh, well, we're representative. Clearly, representative Biggie country. needs to be replaced. Yeah. yeah. So I would maybe reach out to Representative Hunt and sure. see what he thinks, because it's kind of a guy. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, I think it would be a great idea. So in the banking industry, my banks are insured by the by FDIC, and so that if something should happen, how is Bitcoin? How is, what's the what's the um, the vehicle that operates under that? Under cryptocurrency, what's the what's the is there a vehicle similar to FDIC? No. That, that is before before the money hits your bank account, the state's bank account. Yeah. So that's the question, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what the delay is. Is it like nightly? How do they issue the transmissions, the AC transmissions? My concern is that, okay, let's just assume that you know the state's going to get their money. That's fine. The state's going to get their money. But there's, it's more than that. I mean, it's the whole, you know, by endorsing this, we're sort of endorsing the system. And we're endorsing the fact that this is a viable, and, and it, it looks like by all, um, by all information so far, it looks like this could be ultimately a popular way of managing currency, right? Because currency evolves. And, Computer says, you know, computer, the computer age is evolving. So I see those two things possibly going in tandem. I just don't know if this is. Um, I know that we want to get ahead of the curve, but are we like, how far from the curve are we? Because if we're going to, this is being touted as a way of gaining. Um, you know, jobs for New Hampshire or for um, technology to come to New Hampshire. All these things, which are all great, right? How long are we going to wait for that? Because this is still in an infancy state, right? So how long do we, yes? I think that you're, you're very close to hitting a, a good nail on the head. I think this may become a popular way of Paying taxes. I just, can you imagine I just said that sentence? Um, 
I think that, again, it kind of gets back to the, I wanted to wear the merit badge and display my virtue to the other crypto techies. And believe me, fashion is a thing even in technology. Um, for both the payers and the people who use crypto in their daily business operations, they're intentionally um, taking less insurance for uh, a more fast, easy, and cheap mechanism for payment. So they don't have the three or five percent visa fee. They have a point zero something percent Bitcoin fee. Um, and there really is this weighing, you know, if I wanted more guarantees that if something were stolen, it wouldn't be my responsibility, it would be Visa's responsibility, you'd be using a credit card for that. It's sort of a different market niche as far as currencies go. Mm -hmm. so, so you're saying that the people who are using Bitcoin understand the risk? Yes. yes. I'd, I'd say, to be honest with you, many of us who've been using Bitcoin for a long time, uh, in fact, Ian has been using Bitcoin, I think, since before I knew it existed. Um, have had the experience of, oh God, I typed something wrong and my Bitcoins went into the ether. But that was 10 years ago. These days, whatever system you're using, if you're doing a typo, it's going to say there's like checksums and stuff, like with a credit card, like that can't be a Visa card number, that can't be a Bitcoin address, why don't you try again? But that's not to say that my grandmother could pay in Bitcoin yet. That's right. I mean, one of the things that will make Bitcoin more reliable is if more people use it, right? Absolutely. Because like every other speculative um, industry, because right now as this is still a speculative industry because of the number of people that use it and because of the, um, the volatility in the Bitcoin value, right? All those things are indicative of a market that's emerging. Absolutely. So how do you, um, and so you, you want people who pr are promoting this currency want stability, want reliability, and they're going to get that by getting more people involved in the market. Absolutely. Can I answer that? I would separate the two issues. One is the volatility and the uncertainty that's on the user. But the companies that process it, the processing, like big things, they do multi-million dollar um, real estate transactions in California, like 20 million dollars, 30 million dollars. Mm -hmm. So they have it well established and they know what to do with it. The user, on the other hand, like the person holds it, yeah, it's up to him until he spends it, but the, the processors, like PayPal, right? Anybody can use PayPal, I send three dollars through PayPal. You know, it's my fault if I miss my via this or whatever. But the PayPal company is huge and it can handle volume, huge volume, and it's got, all, I don't know what insurance PayPal's got, but there's some time delay as well until the uh, $3 hits my bank account. Right. So they must have the whole back end developed already. They were talking about the $10 million, $100 million transactions going through. Mm -hmm. They've done it in Bitcoin is 10 years old, so they've been around, the base been around yep. for years. You know, how long is it? Uh, they're going to have a yes. Mm -hmm. so, so I was Sorry, I'm late. I was at the HRA. Um, is it my understanding that we're trying to make, come up with an amendment that says, put a button on the, uh, you have such an amendment. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Not officially. Not fully. So you want to put a third party, make sure there's a third party payer in there. Yeah, and just that the, the uh, Paid in full. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it's we so, just want to make sure that the volatility is not on the state and that the state doesn't have to maintain any stores of right. Okay, so yeah, in terms of like the because of like officially endorsing, you know, something that is volatile, it sounds like the users all understand that risk, they, they know about it. We are still learning about it, right. but in terms of the language, some sort of disclaimer on there that. Touches on that some of the language about like, you know, this is this is the market. This is what it is. It's not sure. Whatever, whatever. The things that users already know, but just in terms of the state's liability or lack thereof, just something that clearly says like, this is not you know. In fact, I'd be surprised if most payment processors didn't have language like that as part of their flow already. Right. 
So it'd just be something that maybe we so could let's just have. So something. Let's just double check that. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm sorry, Carol. I think that the you, what I had said earlier is that there's the the state's going to get their money, period. Right. Correct. But then you think, okay, as a, I'm kind of a cradle to grave thinker, right? So I think, all right, if if I if I if I if I vote yes on this, right, then I'm saying that um, not only the state of New Hampshire accepts this, but that this, this is an acceptable form of payment in New Hampshire. That's what we're saying. It is an acceptable form of payment for a lot of private businesses. Um, okay. I'm part owner of a, a restaurant in Manchester that has been accepting Bitcoin for probably five years now. And um, we haven't had any issues with it. In fact, we were thinking, we were planning on a remodeling when the market was near the peak, so we, we got out of it in time. <laughs> but uh, hey, we, were luck we were lucky, good timing on that one. But uh, for the, if you accept it and it's turned into cash, the receiver has no no issues. Right. The person who's paying with Bitcoin or whatever has issues, but that's something that you only get into voluntarily. I mean, you don't just walk up the street and pick up a Bitcoin. Right. You have to deliberately get into it, and, and when you do that, you're aware of the volatility and the fact that not everybody takes it and stuff like that. So I think that the keeping the responsibility for volatility and so forth on the user is entirely appropriate. Yeah. I was just, yeah, my only concern just over the fact that we were choosing the process, so them accepting I think that we, would, we have every right to insist the process is right. bonded and insured and uh, have enough money to take care of whatever, but uh, that's a standard commercial transaction. I would like to move ought to pass with amendment, but we don't have the amendment yet. Okay. Because the bill itself is too old, but I like the concept. Okay. And I'm willing to work with Dennis to get some language. Oh, yeah, Dennis has a diesel car and it didn't start. I don't know. If it's, it's worse in the winter. I don't know. I don't have diesel. So that's why he's not here. Yeah. I, will, I will talk to him at some some convenient point. He's got some, some of my bills in his About the car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. About this. I will get an, I'll get an amendment bill that includes some protections for the state. All right. So I have to pass with the amendment. Second? I'll second it if nobody else wants to. I'll second it. I just obviously want to see the yeah. see the amendment. Well, we're going to see it in committee. Yeah. yeah. Right. So. Right. And so, in the meantime, if we do any, um, the, this, will this get another public hearing? No. No. Okay. Because so, the amendment is well, not a. The amendment is germane. It just being more specific about okay. how to it do it. It doesn't change the intent of the It doesn't the change the intent at all. Okay. But it will get a hearing in the Senate. And then we have to exec it. So yes. you get to chat about it. And yeah, and that's see right. See the, you know, the amendment. And if there's something about the amendment that you don't like, then we can fix it. Right. Before we, we vote on it and push it forward. Right. Okay. Yeah. But I think we're all kind of in agreement that doesn't seem to be a lot of problems with this. People who are in Bitcoin understand the risk, right? Because, like Carol said, you got into it, you had to work to get into it, mm -hmm. so you understand what's going on with it. So, and I'm sure as the state, we're going to pick a processor that has a good reputation and meets all their checklists, right? Because they're not just going to do that yeah. on a whim. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I just want to see something on the website that when they're when they're paying, that they say, yeah, I accept the your process or something or other. Well, just a detail. I, I think that's kind of the deal, right? Yeah. If you're going to pay with Bitcoin, there's a button. Yeah. You understand what that button means. That you're paying with your Bitcoin, 
And it goes, and I'm sure because in that commission they stated that who's ever sending it is responsible for the end payment, that the state gets their money. So I would think that the state's going to put that little disclaimer on there yeah. mm -hmm. that even though you push this button, if we don't get our money, right. we're coming back to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the towns have some more things mm -hmm. so that you can pay your property taxes with credit cards. Right. Complete with the, the outrageous fee for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of people want to do it that way. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Okay. So all in favor of about to pass with amendment. Aye. Aye. That makes it unanimous. All right. Any thoughts, comments from out here? Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry. Could we, could we please have your name? I don't remember your name. Sure. My name is Dennis Goddard. G O D D A R D. You know, just the way it sounds. Like the rocket scientist. You, I think you testified in our committee. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If it, yes, anyone who has uh, preferred language, you can send it to me for consideration. I'll be glad to. Okay. We'd like to invite you to visit freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.